Parting of the Veil with special guest, psychic, intuitive, and experiencer, Gemma Jade. Episode 22 of the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. Welcome to the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. Coming to you from the glacial dumping grounds known as the Michigan Basin, I'm Michelle. And I am Wayne. And we are a Michigan-based husband and wife educator and podcasting duo that after having a UFO sighting in March of 2018, have started to examine UFOs and other paranormal topics within Michigan and beyond. Topics include UFOs, the paranormal, conspiracy theories, ghosts, alternative history and archaeology, cryptids, and all things strange and paranormal. So sit back, grab a drink, and come along with us on this journey down the paranormal rabbit hole. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, Happy New Year, everyone. It is so nice to leave 2021 behind. Yeah, time to start out a new year and see where it takes us. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and get this New Year celebration going here and would like to thank all of our members of the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast Facebook group for keeping the discussion thriving and going up until today. Yeah, and don't forget that if you do like this podcast and you have family members or friends that you think would be interested in the podcast, please share us out and invite them along for this crazy paranormal ride. Besides all of our podcast platforms, we are now also on YouTube. So make sure that you head on over and give us a subscribe and a like. We also have a small presence now over on Instagram, so you can follow us over there for the latest information and updates and shows when they become available. So head on over to Instagram and also Twitter so you can check us out over there. One of the best things about this podcast is being able to um, listen and read some of the stories from our listeners. So if you have a story you would like to tell, we would like to talk to you. You can reach out to us at mi.ufo.podcast at gmail.com. Send us a brief summary of your experience and we'll contact you to discuss things further and try to get you or your story on the podcast. And also, don't forget, there is a store for our podcast with some pretty cool looking shirts. Absolutely. If you head over to miufopodcaststore.online, you will find our Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal podcast store where you can buy t-shirts, cups, all kinds of things with our logo on it. And we would be uh, very excited to have you supporting the podcast. You know you want to rock some alien swag. Everybody wants to rock alien swag. You can find links to all of our social media platforms along with our email address and our podcast store all below in the show notes. So make sure you check that out. All right, Michelle, I think it's that time again. It's time for What's in the News. Yes, what is in the news? Okay, I have to read this title with a straight face. Aliens in Bedroom, UFO Sightings on the Rise in Northern Ireland. Stop right there. Aliens in bedroom. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I guess that's going to give the probe a whole new meaning. Nothing like having an out of this world experience. (laughs) So (laughs) police receive eight unexplained sightings in 2021, including white lights and strange images on closed caption TV. (laughs) From mysterious discs over Slamish Mountain in County Antrim to strange images spotted on CCTV. Unexplained sightings increased in Northern Ireland again last year. See, it's not just over here in the U.S. Police received eight sightings in Northern Ireland during 2021, an increase from six such reports in 2020 and four in 2019. So the numbers are not quite there yet. However, it seems that they take place in the bedroom. 
These included a report of a spaceship and flashing lights in the Downpatrick area on the 17th of January. In May, police received two sightings reports, one of white lights after a helicopter in the Magabri area and an odd disk seen in the sky in the Schlemish area of County Antrim at the end of the month. In July, there was a report of strange images on closed caption TV in a house in the Newtown Abbey area and a dome-shaped object with eight lights in the sky reported in the Saintfield area. In September, a report was received in the Lisburn area of aliens in bedroom, while in October, a detained patient reported having been abducted by aliens. Detained patient. What is a detained patient? They're not letting you go away. <laughs> uh, the, you you need medical attention, therefore we are detaining you. You are talking about aliens. We are keeping you right here. <laughs> the final report of the year was of unusual bright lights in the sky in November. UFO sighting reports on the Police Service of Northern Ireland database include unidentified flying objects, aerial phenomena, unidentified aerial phenomena, Lights in the Sky in Aliens and Extraterrestrials. A PSNI spokesperson said no investigations had been carried out in relation to these incidents. Nick Pope, who used to investigate reports of UFO sightings for the Ministry of Defense, said it was possible that more people spending more time at home during the pandemic may account for a rise in reported sightings. So they're saying everybody who was locked up just went nuts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's possible. I know I was getting kind of nutty there for a little Woo-hoo. bit. It's difficult to say what lies behind the small increase in sightings, he said. COVID-19 and lockdowns may have played a role with people having more time on their hands during the pandemic and perhaps spotting things that previously may have gone unnoticed. Another possibility is that people are following the situation in the United States, there we go, Mm -hmm. where Congress is taking the issue seriously and the Pentagon has launched a new UFO initiative. This may make people more likely to report something unusual that they've seen because it sends the message that the authorities take the matter seriously. However, Pope said he believed the true number of sightings was much higher. Sadly, the numbers are still fairly below, and I suspect there's chronic underreporting, perhaps because of the perceived stigma, he said. That's possibly a consequence of the Ministry of Defense's decision to stop investigating UFOs at the end of 2009. If the MOD restart investigations and ask the public to report anything unusual, I'm sure they'll receive lots of reports. I swear every time I see Ministry of Defense, my mind starts going Harry Potter and Hogwarts. Exactly. (laughs) All right, so we're going to go ahead and kick off this New Year's podcast with a couple shout outs. Starting with the Chad Smith podcast, host Chad Smith and co-host Sonny Conway from the Paranormal Chop Shop talk with different guests every week about the strange, unidentified flying objects, the paranormal, and anything else they can think of. Check out the Chad Smith podcast on YouTube, link provided in the show notes. He's also a fellow Michigan podcaster, so make sure you check him out and show him some love. Remember, we are all chad smith no i'm definitely chad smith today yeah you are chad smith today (laughs) next we have the loss in the dark podcast hosted by burton and aaron this is a pretty cool podcast that bills itself as an attempt to capture incredible conversations between best friends as we explore all of our passions but especially music and the world of heavy metal so if you're into paranormal investigations and loud heavy metal music, give them a listen. Strong language, but it's heavy metal and the paranormal. What else would you expect? And keeping it short and sweet, we're going to go to our friends, the Brothers of the Serpent podcast. This is one of my favorite podcasts and simply two brothers that explore the mysteries of the ages, the ancients, and the modern day. And just so everybody knows, they have right now a seven-part series on UFOs. It is fantastic, and I highly recommend you guys check out the Brothers of the Serpent podcast and look for their seven-part series on UFOs. It's fascinating. 
To bring in the new year, we have a very fascinating guest coming on with us tonight. We're doing something a little bit different. And our guest tonight is a psychic, an intuitive, and an experiencer. Yeah, based off of this discussion, I can understand why she never turns on the news. Yeah, this is a, it's a very different realm we have decided to uh, look into with uh, Gemma. And uh, it's very fascinating. Not only the discussion of the faith theory, but the fact that I get my very first Oracle reading tonight as well. I sat here biting my tongue a lot of the times because of everything that was showing up in your reading. So, um, yeah, I tried not to project anything that would like give her hints as to being close to being true or not, or, you know, whether she was on the right track. I just kind of sat back and, well, and being wow. a, and and being a skeptic myself, there were things that were shared that hit spot on. So very, very interesting stuff. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we want to go ahead and introduce to you Miss Gemma Jade. Gemma, thanks for joining us tonight. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great having you on. We've uh, crossed paths a couple times. We got some of the same friends in the community, David Scott, uh, Big Willie, Chad Smith, all of us running around and, and sharing the YouTube potosphere type of, um, I guess, community. So we had to get you on and we wanted to bring you on for this new year and talk about doing some readings for Michelle and a couple of our listeners. So it was great to have you join us. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Let's do so, it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get into this. So we're going to go down some rabbit holes here and uh, I'm, I'm excited and intrigued by the, the whole idea of everything that we're going to cover today. So first of all, let's start. Gemma, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about you and how you got into the paranormal tarot cards? I, I don't even know. I know you're probably an, what they call it. What is it? An intuitive, right? And intuitive, psychic. Psychic. Right. Experiencer, so, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Take it away. Tell us about you. All right. So I think pretty much since birth, even though I can't remember back that far, um, I have been having experiences. I have memories, like my first memories are of people from the other side being in the rooms with me. Um, I didn't know that they were spirit or ghosts um, necessarily when I was that little, but I knew that I was the only one who could see them. And I knew my parents and my siblings would just call them imaginary friends. I didn't know what that meant. As I started getting older, I started, you know, because spirit sometimes doesn't care how they appear. So being a six or seven year old and a spirit appearing as they appeared in death with gore and in death wounds, was really, really scary. And my father is 100% Irish. My mother is 100% Native American Cherokee. So kind of from both sides, I realized that my grandmothers, more so my Irish granny, were kind of into, I don't want to say so much that they were, I, I always say kitchen witches, but not so much. I would just say that they knew a lot about psychic and empaths and even the Fae, which you know, we can get into later as well. But so my Irish granny, she would explain a lot of things to me and tell me that it was normal and that it was okay. And she would help me do things, you know, from a very young age, seven, eight, nine years old. She just happened to live upstairs. She would teach me how to meditate, how to kind of control my energy, because when I would have outbursts, things in the house would blow up or break, you know, um, microwaves, light bulbs, television sets. And you know, at that time in the late eighties, early nineties, this kind of stuff wasn't as mainstream as now we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have the internet. So it was really hard for me to understand. Um, I, of course I was the weird kid at school. My head was always in a book and I was always afraid to be around other kids my age because I was always constantly with these spirits, whether they, they were negative or positive. I didn't know how to get rid of the negative ones. So as I grew up, you know, my teenage years, um, 
I saw a movie about teenage witches and I was like, oh man, I can do that stuff. And I started messing around with things that I didn't know a lot about. By that time, my granny had passed and it was kind of by myself living with just my mom who, you know, she encouraged it, but she really was scared of it. So she really didn't sit and talk with me about it and stuff like that, which I don't blame her because I can imagine how scary that is when your child is telling you that there's dead people at your dinner table. You know, it's got to be pretty, pretty scary and then pretty bizarre. So I think I ended up with, you know, having some pretty scary experiences as far as, you know, um, possibly with demons, I believe were attached to me for a little while in my high school years, had a pretty rough road until I was about, I'd really say like two years ago when I decided to, you know, get on YouTube, I was kind of bored one day and I kind of got tired of sitting around my house doing nothing. So I did a YouTube video, just kind of talking to the camera about nothing. And it started off with true crime. But what happened with true crime was, you know, I can't watch the news because if someone's missing and they're actually deceased, they'll end up in my room that night. You know, a lot of um, psychics and mediums don't watch the news for reasons like that. So I started the YouTube channel with true crime, but it really didn't work out because I was being visited by people and you can't go, or at least I felt like I couldn't go and be like, oh, this person's deceased. And then you have family members listening who are, who still have hope. So I didn't want to be a part of that. So somehow I just kind of ended up hooking up with Steve Stockton over on Missing Persons and Mysteries. And I found my place in the paranormal community reading Oracle cards, which are a little bit different than tarot, but it's the same idea. With Oracle, you have a little more room to kind of move because with tarot, the cards mean what they mean. With Oracle, they'll have a book meaning and a lot of psychics read Oracle from the book meaning. What I do is I read the book meaning, but I also channel spirit and the person who I'm reading for is guides to come through, um, possibly, you know, deceased relatives, their ancestors, all the positive higher elevational energies to come through and give a more comprehensive meaning to the cards. So I do, you know, one card readings, I do three card readings, I do 12 card readings, um, which is a little different than tarot. But that's kind of how I got started in the YouTube community. Once I hooked up with Steve on Missing Persons and Mysteries, it kind of took off for me. And I was finally able to kind of find my people. Do you know what I mean? I, I no longer keep it to myself. I, I, I'm practicing my craft now. I, I'm helping people, I hope. And it's just been an amazing 19 months. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. Now, when you started into this and when you started seeing the spirits and the spirits of dead people, was there something that happened at all in your life that as a young child that you might think was uh, the catalyst that might have brought upon these these being able to see these energies, like for instance, some people that have like a near death experience will then come back with these stories, but then they also seem like they are tuned into things a little bit differently afterwards. Um, so like we had Josh uh, Casey on and, you know, he was talking about his near death experience and now everything that he's seen with the orbs and all that, that was our last episode. I'm just curious, was there something in your childhood that happened at that point, you know, or at some point that might've opened you to this other realm? I always thought um, when I started getting into maybe the whys and trying to figure out why was I so different? Because for a long time, I really hated it about myself. And I didn't tell people, you know, because you get judged, especially as a teenager, you know, you don't want to be the girl that sees, sees and hears things other people don't, you know, I was already weird enough because I loved books. But I always thought it was when I was younger, I used to have these convulsions, these seizures. Um, my temperature for no reason would go from like normal to 104 in like 30 seconds. And I would have these seizures. And I thought that's what it was. But later on, when I met my guides and I started doing my channeling and would go to my guides, I decided to just ask them, you know, like, why me? And it turns out from what they told me, I was reincarnated too early. I had a choice to make when I was on the other side, when I was in spirit to be reincarnated early to save my father's life somehow, or to continue on the path that I was on and be incarnated 
reincarnated um, much later. And I chose to be reincarnated earlier than I was supposed to. And the deal was that I kind of wasn't ready and had to take some knowledge with me. And that's what I was told by my guides happened. Had I chosen to wait and take the path that I had originally chose, which was to be reincarnated, you know, I don't even know how long down the line and my father would have died, then I might not have been born like this. Although I do know I was a psychic like this in several past lives as well. And by guides, what do you mean by guides? Are you talking about like your grandmothers? And So all of us, when we're born, have guardian angels. They are real. And we have spirit guides. And we also have soulmates. And I know we as humans think of soulmates as the love of our life, you know, our other half. But what a soulmate, quote unquote, actually is, is your soul's mate, as in your soul's bestie on the other side. And you chart your life together with this soulmate. And actually, they're usually not incarnated at the same time as you because they're watching you um, take your path and keeping you on it. So everyone has several spirit guides. Sometimes, most of the time, some of them are ancestral, but you'll have one main one who could be an ancestor, who could be a soulmate, who could just be somebody that you made an agreement with that they'd watch your back while you were incarnated. You watch their back while they're incarnated. My main guide is Aaron. He is not an ancestor. He's simply a soulmate. There are people in this world that we have soul bonds and soul contracts with, and we can talk about that later if you want, um, which is more of what we think of as soulmate. It's actually bonds and contracts. But yeah, so everybody has these guides. Everybody can, if you meditate the right way, and if you really practice, can meet your guides. They help me so much. I get advice from them. They guide me, and they really have been keeping me on track since I've started really connecting with them about 18 years, uh, 18 months ago. Okay. That's really interesting. I never heard it put that way. before. They protect you. I've heard you've talked before and, and there's a couple of these things that really interest me. And it's the idea of, well, first of all, vampires and also like a gremlin or goblin type of creature or thing. Right. And I know you've done extensive research and I think you've also written a book called what well, it's missing, right? The faith, missing the faith theory, missing the faith theory. I got that in my Amazon shopping cart right now. So let's uh, let's dig into that a little bit and maybe get into the whole idea of these, these supernatural paranormal type of creatures. Even you, I think you just mentioned like skinwalker, which I'm very fascinated with. Mm-hmm. And uh, so where would you want to go and talk about first and dig into a little bit? We can start with the Fae. That's something that not a lot of people, I mean, if you look on YouTube, you'll see scary fairy stories and made up stories. But if you're really talking about the Fae and the Fae are plural for fairy, um, a lot of people don't know that it's F-A-E, Fae, because fairy is actually spelled F-A-E-R-Y if you're being kind of correct about it, um, which I'm totally like a grammar, crazy person with grammar and spelling. But anyway, so we can start with them. The goblin, goblins, trolls, pixies, sprites, ogres. um, I mean, there are thousands of different kinds of fairy. And I wrote a book called Missing the Fae Theory because of the what I call missing phenomenon because of copyright issues, the people that are going missing in our national parks, the people that are going missing in the woods of the world, not just here in the United States, it's happening all over. And it is a fact that it's happening by the thousands. I mean, the numbers I don't have in front of me, but they're astronomical. The amount of people that are camping, hiking, hunting, just going for a walk. I live next to a nature preserve and you know, I had a glimmer man encounter. So, and I'm in Northern New Jersey, 10 feet from a main road. So all of these people that are going missing, I had a theory that maybe some of it, not all of it, but definitely some of it is due to the Fae abducting them for one reason or another. If you look at the parameters, the only finding one shoe, the you're blinking and they're gone. 
the, um, the amount of children that go missing in the blink of an eye while out picking berries, the amount of children that say that uh, a relative or loved one who wasn't even there with them told them, hey, follow me, and they followed them into the woods. It's astronomical is the only word that I can use to just to, you know, tell you how much this is happening. And those parameters meet how the Fae operates people being found near water sources deceased or in water sources deceased. I can attribute all of it to a specific kind of fay. The shoes, you know, there's something with taking your shoes off. Your feet have so much energy. If you're hunting something in the woods, I mean, if you put yourself like you're a hunter hunting something and you're evil, like, like a lot of the fay are very evil. They're not the disnified version. You're going to make it take its shoes off, have more fun with it. That's my theory. So I feel like what I want people to know if they get nothing else out of my book, out of all my extensive research, is that the Fae fairies are not the Disneyfied Tinkerbell Shrek versions we've come to know. They're very real. They're very dangerous. Elf on a shelf, um, garden gnomes, these fairy gardens that people are building with their children, mainly their daughters. They're totems, and it can bring the wrong thing into your house, infestations. And I got into this simply because of experiences that I've had where I've been approached by what I didn't know at the time because I was little, a fae being and brought into their world. And again, this is a memory that I didn't even have until three years ago, repressed. And I brought it up to my friend Steve Stockton for his channel. I said, what if it's the fae doing all this? And I ended up writing several scripts for his channel on, it's called Missing the Faith Theory. And I had a publisher reach out and said, we need to make this a book and make people aware of this. It's it's a serious topic, a serious book that, you know, there are a lot of skeptics like there are with anything else, but it's it's a very serious problem. And I do really believe that the Fae are responsible. I believe Bigfoot could possibly be a Fae creature. The jury's still out on that. So... Did um did your grandmother on the Irish side ever talk about the Fae with you? Yes, yes, she did very, very much so. She told me that I had Fae blood. Fae blood, when it comes from the mother's side, most likely or most of the time the person has an experience. They're born psychic or they at least have experiences with Fae. Like fairies will approach you more because you share their blood. If it's on the father's side, you're most likely going to be born a skeptic. Me, of course, everything upside down and backwards, have it on my father's side. I thought it was my mother's side until I spoke with my mother and realized it actually is on my father's side. Um, my granny, my Irish granny, she used to tell me stories of the little people from the old country. And, you know, when I was about six or seven, I was up at a place from my hometown we call Garrett Mountain. It's an old castle of some kind, which is weird because it's in Patterson, New Jersey, but it's an old big castle that they turned into a museum. But it's up high, it overlooks the entire city, and it's all woods. And now it's all hiking trails and running trails. But back then it was this museum. And the way my father remembers this story very differently than I do. He remembers that he blinked and I was gone. And like you know, it took him like a half hour before I jumped out from behind some trees and said, surprise, daddy, did I scare you? You know, um, that I was playing hide and seek. The way I remember this encounter is that two little kids who I now know were just fae people and they were um, probably, oh, what's the name? One species of fae that look human, but they're very short, not like elves or trolls. I can't, I don't have it in my head right now. And I followed them. They brought me into this big glittery portal looking thing. A lot of it was blurred out to me. And the only thing I've ever seen like it, that's not even really, but that like semi describes what I saw was the movie Avatar. Like how that was just like the bright colors and everything beautiful. And I, I got this overwhelming sense of peace. And I was told that I was being prepared. I thought I was gone for like two minutes before I went back. And my father said it was more like 20, 25 minutes. He was, there were no cell phones back then. He was actually... Um, trying to get into the museum to call the police because he thought I was missing. But that's how it happens in the blink of an eye. But yeah, she told me all about it. I mean, she kind of had to because my mom didn't want to talk about it and my dad didn't want to accept it. 
Well, and it's typically with the Fae, it's the Irish folklore. So even teaching a mythology class, I've told my kids, like we go through Egyptian, Norse, and then Greek and Roman. And then, but I tell them, I said, with all cultures and religions, I said, there comes a plethora of different mythologies. I said, but you've got to be careful which ones you look into. So, because even recently I had started looking into, um, Irish folklore and the Fae and you do, you, you've got to be careful how much research you do into it because you don't know what will attach. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. You know, that's interesting about it. Cause you said the word Disney-fied, uh, about the Fae because, uh, you know, Tinkerbell and all that, but isn't the the history or at least the mythology of the fae it's not very good i remember reading something about that they would come and kidnap little babies and replace them with their own kids to be mm -hmm. raised in a human household or something like that and then they would take the bait i i don't i don't remember Deeply. the specifics so maybe you can fill us in on yeah. that but it was not not if the fae or the fairy were not nice they're not um very friendly like i say disney because you see it all the time in the movies you know you don't want to run into an ogre they literally make toys for their children out of our bones you know so it's really gruesome some of them okay with the changelings it's a lot harder for them to do now, obviously, because of security measures in hospitals. But way back in the day when they used to birth at home in their huts, you know, the what the fairy would do, there's a lot of interbreeding with the fae because they keep their blood pure and it works differently than humans do, like with the anatomy and all that kind of stuff. So usually it works out okay. The elves every few hundred years need human blood. So they'll seduce a human, usually it's a woman. And, in, and that'll be where the changeling comes in, where they take their own child. But mainly with the changelings, the Fae sometimes have very sickly kids because of this. And what they would do is they would sneak into the homes through magic. The Fae are magic. Their magic is ancient. It's pretty much unstoppable. And we don't stand a chance against it. So they would sneak in and they'd take the changeling sickly child and take the healthy human baby to be raised as the fae and leave the changeling. Because what do you do if that happens? You call the police, a fairy just took my child. What did they do back then? There's nothing you can do. Every once in a while, the fae would return the human child because I believe that it's because that human child had fae blood because when they return the child, it would be very well-versed in music and like fae culture and all of that. But for the most part, you never see, they would never see their, their children again. And the mother would know it wasn't their child, but the Fae would continuously visit. And who knows how they chose who they were going to pick. But yes, the changeling phenomena, if you read back um, missing people or kidnappings way, way back, you'll see a lot of that where the parent says, you know, my baby was there and then it wasn't my baby. And, and who do you you know, or this so-and-so reported that they woke up and their baby had been replaced by a changeling. These people were locked up for saying things like that, sometimes killed, burned at the stake or, or killed as a witch. The thing that I talk about in my book a lot is the treaties that I believe we had with the Fae from pretty much the beginning of humanity. And what happened was as human beings, you know, back in the days of peasants, when there were peasants and kings and all that, you know, all over, not just in Europe, the Fae would live side by side in the same home as the humans and they would help. And we had this mutually beneficial relationship. And by tearing down the forest and once human beings kind of advanced, we forgot about them and left them behind. And they have this intense hatred of us because of that, because of the destruction, because of the war, because of, you know, humanity in, in, its, in its worst is what they look at. And we had just as much magic, I believe, and I've actually, in my research, I've seen that we were just as magical as the Fae from the beginning, but we have lost a lot of it and they have not. And that's why they're really very formidable when coming up against them. And I, you know, talk about all ways that you can kind of not offend them, not, you know, um, piss them off, make them mad in my book. What do you think is the the reasoning behind this 
switching of the faith from these spirits that would take your children and stuff to now you see Tinkerbell and Peter Pan, which, you know, really is not all that great of a, a story. If you look at it and break it down, uh, you know, here's a, here's a young man that doesn't want to ever grow up and, you know, wants to continue to be a kid and have no responsibility. And there's a lot of <laughs> hidden meetings in this. Oh yeah. But what, what do you think was that uh, impetus for? Well, and here's the thing. And, and Disney has gone on to keep, you know, the, the whole, as you said, the, the Disney fi the, you know, the blonde, you know, little Sprite that was very friendly and all smiles. And it wasn't until later, um, that if, did you ever see spider wick, the no, spider wick chronicles? No, now, see that is a darker side to the fairies and the ogres and the trolls. And it was only put into syndication for one movie and then never again, nothing else was followed up with it. So, well, I it, it, and, and I want to back this up too. And, and, and this leads into like the whole UFO thing and abductions. Do you think there's also some type of a crossover? And I know I'm throwing a lot at you because as okay. these things pop up in my head, I start to get scattered brain if I don't get it out. But, you know, what, what is the, what do you think the meaning is for disney the Fae? And do you think there is a connection of UFO abductions and what we have now versus what was happening then. Okay. So the first thing with the disney of the Fae, um, I want to reiterate again, because it's important. It's very dangerous that they did this, but it started, I believe with the brothers Grimm, the brothers Grimm wrote real, as we know, tales of, real fairy encounters and real stories with substance and real life um, deaths, you know, the wolf eating Red Riding Hood at the end and, and the evil queen and the, you know, everything that the Brothers Grimm wrote. But here's what happened. Their humanity kicked in when they tried to sell these to people and people were like, oh, what is the, you know, I can't read this to my kid. And the Brothers Grimm said, okay, will make them more palatable. And they even change theirs for as horrible as they still are. So I think what Disney did is say, you know, oh, wow, this is a cute story about, you know, um, a girl in a red coat going to visit her grandma. Let's make it cute because all little girls want a red cape to go visit their grandma. We can sell this. And I do believe it came down to the almighty dollar. I really do. Uh, even the Brothers Grimm, like I said, they kind of backed up and said, mm, we got to make this more palatable for people to want to read. And, you know, the people wanted books back then to read to their children when they were finally able to obtain them. So the Brothers Grimm said, OK, we'll make it, you know, uh, better and, and more easy. Um, and, and the lessons, the real life lessons kind of got lost. As far as the UFOs. I believe that what was happening even back then and what happens today between the Fay abductions, I even put in my book about a woman who was taken to a quote unquote castle in the sky by little green men. And it's labeled a fairy abduction. And there are other things in it that I can't pull off the top of my head that made me put it as Fay abduction. I believe the abduction from extraterrestrial, and I don't claim to be any kind of expert because I just started getting into that with some repressed memories that I realized I've had encounters with extraterrestrials, uh, which is probably why I feared them, this unexplainable fear my entire life of outer space and aliens. But I believe it's so similar in nature that our minds want to connect them. But I do not believe they're connected. I don't believe the Fae are aliens or aliens are the Fae, but I do believe they kind of operate the same way with extraterrestrials using technology and telepathy and whatever they use to, you know, get into your home and get into your head and the Fae using ancient magic. Yeah, that's, it's fascinating stuff because when you start digging into this and there are certain people out there, um, there's a podcaster who's also a filmmaker. You might've heard of him. His name is Kurt J. Mungle. He kind of runs the the theory of everything type of podcast. And, and these are his ideas of mathematics and 
quantum physics and all of this stuff that I'm just thinking that there's so much stuff that could be crossover and part of our consciousness, I guess. And we had a little discussion before we started recording the interview about bringing things towards you um, by invoking it or um, yeah, what was the, the big thing not too long ago with vision boards and all of that? Um, your intentions, right? Yeah. You, right. So my idea is kind of like that with Bigfoot with, and, and only certain people are going to see these things that, that are going to be open to it. And they've been bringing these things around them or creating an attachment. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that and what your experience has been learning about those things and how we can attract these things and right yeah so I didn't know this as a little kid you know when I was seeing spirits at the dinner table or communicating with the dead or you know the first time I met a demon I, I wanted to know more and I was already a bookworm. So we didn't have the internet I'm showing my age here, but I would go to the library and look it up. And I was a very low energy, sickly kid, you know, and the doctors could never find out what was wrong with me. And I would never say that, you know, I saw this or that, or heard this or that after it got to a certain point with my dad would get so angry because he didn't know. He just didn't believe. And, and he thought that it was something wrong with me no matter how much my granny told him it wasn't. So I decided to shut it off completely to the best of my ability. But what was happening is as I researched and even more recently researching for my, um, researching for my channel, looking into demonic demons or demonic possession, which is something that absolutely terrifies me. So of course I decided to dive right in. And I'm an over researcher, like, because I wanted to get it out of my system. I think I've met the devil twice. I've had encounters with demons and I, I wanted to know more, but what happened is I didn't realize that I should be shielding myself. And as a psychic, I should have known better. We can just close our eyes and envision white light coming out of either our heart or our third eye up here, or just surrounding us in general. What I do is something a little more unique. I picture full length mirrors facing outward. So if someone were looking at me, say they'd have to look at the imaginary mirror because evil can't look itself in the face. So it'll keep people away from you in a crowd. I'll tell you that much, but I wasn't doing this. And suddenly I started getting really sick, really low energy, really ornery, just like snapping at my family and waking up like, oh, it's a ter terrible day. And just so out of, out of character for me, you know, I'm usually pretty happy in my life. I'm a happy go lucky person, a little low energy. I'm a Pisces though. So, but I knew something was wrong. And I realized again, with talking to Steve Stockton, when we would go live and talk about the BEK or talk about demonic possession, our equipment would shut down for no reason. Our streams would stop in the middle of the stream three, four, five, six times in one night. Something didn't want the message out there. And I realized I had some negative attachments that I know how to remove myself. But if I were just a regular, quote unquote, regular person, I, number one, wouldn't recognize that it was an attachment. Number two, would have no clue what to do with it. And they'll stay attached to you. Like they will literally stay attached to you for as long as they can feed off you, feed off your anger and your agitation and your frustration. And they kind of niggle in your head to like, surreptitiously encourage it too, you know, getting mad about, you know, a dropped napkin and like wanting to being so angry, like wanting to put my fist through a wall because my husband was three minutes late coming home. That was an attachment. You know, I, that's not me. So I was able to get rid of it, but we really have to be careful in our research. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're going to read a book about something. You read my book. It's not going to attract the fae immediately. But if you're sitting there like I was day after day, night after night, nothing but demonic, demonic, demonic on my computer, I'm in books, you have to take a break. You have to put light up. You have to protect yourself. I'm also a religious person, which a lot of people aren't. And like I told you before we started recording, I don't think YouTube is the place for that. But for me, without it, I don't know what I do because I call on Jesus. 
And that, that seems to help. It disperses the shadow entities and many people who even aren't religious when it comes to shadow entities, which is a whole other thing, but I'll say it, have noticed that reciting the Lord's Prayer, even in their head, will dispel these shadow entities. Even non-religious people who don't even believe in Jesus somehow compelled to say this prayer. So you can bring it on you. I would, I would say that, you know, regular research, if, you know, you're doing a book report for school or if you're just looking into it because you're curious or watching a documentary, that's okay. But once you start, like I was, obsessively researching it because the attachment makes you want to research more. Do you know what I mean? You really have to be careful with things that you don't know about like that. And I think the average person doesn't realize how serious it is whether you're a skeptic or you're not a skeptic, you know, demonic entities, the Fae, they don't care about skeptic or not skeptic. They want you to not believe. They want you. It's better for them if you don't believe, because if you don't believe, you're not going to understand what's happening and you're not going to get rid of it. So, I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah. And, and that brings me to a thought about um, these teenagers who will get into looking into the paranormal and becoming a you know, literally obsessed with it or, uh, going down a, a dark path and, and learning these things and then just having that continue to fester. And then you start to wonder, is there now, did they bring an attachment in because of how they've been studying it, it going through their head, they mm-hmm. attract something. And then that kind of takes over. What's your thoughts? I definitely believe that that could happen, especially with teenagers. And, you know, I'm going to say it and a lot of people are going to say that I'm wrong or or there's something wrong with this, but I'm going to say it, especially with girls, because we, we do have different energies as male and female. I, I, you know, it's, it's a fact. It's not just our bodies that are different. Our whole energies are completely different and women, females energy is more open is more susceptible to these attacks. I'm not saying it doesn't happen to men. I'm just saying on a small scale, it does happen more to women and it does happen more to teenagers because our energy is more open. I I know when I was a teenager, like I said, I would get angry and, you know, the light would blow. It would be complete poltergeist activity. And that, that was scary to my father. Do you know what I mean? But it does happen. I was just going to ask you about that. Some people in the paranormal realms do contribute some of the ghost or, or poltergeist activity to young, the energies of a young teenage girl or girls in the house. Um, You know, depending on how old they are. And it's like when these people leave the house and they go to investigate, nothing's going to happen because the, the teenage girl's not there. And yeah, I tend to agree with you on the, the whole energy thing. I would say sometimes someone will have me read for their teenage kid or, you know, even their child. The other day I did a reading for a nine-year-old. I was like, this is so weird, but I'm glad I did because I realized that the nine-year-old is some type of um, either psychic or empath or, and the person that asked me to read did not tell me this, but they're like, oh my gosh, that's why I asked you to read for her because she's saying she's seeing things. What I would recommend for teenagers, especially going through puberty, male or female, but the females, if your teenagers, you know, if you're getting poltergeist activity, get them in karate, get them in, uh, gymnastics, get them in cheerleading, get them in football, get them in something that's going to disperse that energy because otherwise it does get pent up. And depending how strong of a psychic or empath or clairsentient, clairvoyant, whatever it is, it is they're going to tear stuff up in your house. And it is going to, I mean, there are ghosts that are poltergeists. Don't get me wrong. There are ghosts. Um, poltergeists, I believe in German literally means noisy ghost, but a lot of the time it is energy that is being made by young teenagers, usually going right through puberty. If they're a natural witch, I don't like using the word witch, but there's a stigma attached to it, but it's a whole different thing. If they're a natural witch like me since birth, seeing things, being able to move things, um, all of these, you know, this stuff, knowing things, then it's going to follow them regardless of what they do. It would have been a lot better for me had I been put in something that can get the energy out. You know, I still do not leave my house much. 
I tried to go and I'll tell you this story quick because it's, it's what happens starts happening a lot around puberty and they don't, it's on a smaller scale. So these kids don't realize that it's happening. It's this knowing I went to spirit Halloween around Halloween time. And I was waiting for Steve Stockton to send me a message about my costume because we're thinking about matching. So I'm waiting for him in the spirit Halloween. They've got the music going. And this happens to me everywhere I go. It doesn't matter if the Olive Garden or outside. And I'm talking to my neighbor. When my husband and son came in 20 minutes later, I was in a corner like this, crying with my eyes closed, covering my ears. And my three-year-old's like, mommy's playing hide and seek. I wasn't playing hide and seek. What happened was I went in, I was not only hearing the loud music, I was hearing the thoughts of everybody in there. I knew that this guy just beat his wife. This woman's cheating on her husband. I knew that this kid snuck out of his house. I knew that this person, you know, started a fire. I knew everything about everyone all at once. And it just shut me completely down. And this has been happening to me since I was about a teenage puberty, teenage age, 13, 14 years old. I'm working now with my guides to block that kind of energy and to make it more, you know, focused. But for now, I really don't leave my house because of that. And I would recommend anyone that has a child going through that to please get them something to dispel and disperse that energy. So they don't end up like me almost 39 years old and can't leave the house because I never learned how to deal with it. Wow. That's pretty intense. Once you think it is. About it, it's like, <laughs> it is. And I was a ooh. waitress for 15 years. It was, <laughs> it reminded me of like Sookie Stackhouse. I swear. That's exactly what it was. These people would be having these thoughts and I had to like, I would sit there like, I can't say nothing because they didn't say it out loud. You know? Uh, yeah, it is it's very intense and it's scary. It, it is scary. Like, I don't want to know all that, but on a smaller scale, it could be just knowing something right when meeting them. Do you know what I mean? You get a thought in your hand that you're like, why did I just think this person's an a-hole? They're so nice because you know something about them. You, you felt their energy. All right. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit then. And, uh, Man, because we could we could just stay on the face. I told and, you I can go all night on oh, any man. of this stuff, you know. Right. Um, I'm really interested about the whole idea of vampires. And and if, I'm interested from a a psychological point of view because I know about psychic vampires and like having energy. having yeah, having dealt with them in my I don't think it's anything supernatural. If from from that standpoint, now I know there's other types of vampires that may actually be supernatural, but obviously this came from somewhere that it actually made its way into you know the 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 writings of you know psychology textbooks and things like that that I read about. And when I read about them, these people that are able to change the whole mood of a room when they oh. walk in because they can you can feel the energy of the room change and then if you engage with them in talking they will pull like emotional energy just out of you 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 will feel tired with just i call it like the the over drama right it's mm -hmm. always something something yeah. something that they're you know constantly laying on you and drawing energy from you, but really not looking for a response or looking for any type of help or anything. It's just to put it out there to pull your energy away, whether they realize they're doing it or not. So from, from my standpoint, that's how I look at a, a psychic vampire. What can you tell us? Cause I know you've said you're fascinated with vampires, oh. and, you know, whether it's Anne Rice or uh, even before those writings, Bram, uh, was Bram it Bram Stoker? Stoker, Bram Stoker right? Yeah. Yeah. So very fascinating stuff. So why don't you, uh, give us a little bit on your ideas about these different types of vampires and what's going on. So I just want to say, Michelle, you have a guide here. Do you see my ear? It's like bright red, <laughs> like you have, you have a guide here, I think for the, for the reading later. Oh, you need, you need to tell Michelle about that. What, what happens because you, for done some a, reason, you, you yeah. did a reading for me off like a couple weeks ago 
Uh And, and that's my reading. I'm not saying anything about it, but you did tell me something about what happens when these guides show up and you're getting ready to do a reading. So why don't you tell them about that as well? Whenever spirits around, they, they're like bothering me to tell you. That's why I interrupted the vampire thing. Cause they're like, tell her. And I'm looking, I'm like, all right, all right. Like I'll tell her, hold on. Um, my ears get bright red. Usually um, it gets a little hard to breathe, but not like in an overwhelming way. It actually feels very peaceful, but it's a little hard like to breathe. And my face itches. So I'm sitting here like, and I'm like, all right. So it's like a Noreen or a Nora. It's either an ancestor or a guide. And I'll figure that out later on. But I don't know. They said to, they're here. So, I, okay, they're ready. <laughs> they're going to have to wait. They'll wait. But um, it's cra- It's just so crazy because I felt it in my ears. And I'm like, oh, I need to wear my hair down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if on for, screen, so we're and, good. Since this is not a video podcast, for those of you yeah. listening, Literally, her, her ears are turning right. Her, her left <laughs> ear, just yeah, out of left. nowhere. Yeah, and I'm colorblind, so you know I don't see things all that well when it comes to <laughs> colors. But I could tell instantly. Just the one part of the outside of your ear has just turned beet red. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It's uh, yeah. it's very. I don't know if I should be nervous or excited, <laughs> right? Oh it's boy, it's nothing bad. It's it's definitely from light, so it's nothing bad. It's someone who watches over you. But um, I'll go back to the vampire thing. But they were insistent about being acknowledged, so th- they're acknowledged now. They're good. So I told them like you have to wait. It's a process, you know. They don't really know YouTube, so <laughs> we're doing an interview here, spirits. Just yeah, we got we got exactly. plenty of time. We got plenty yeah. of time. Last week, real quick, when I was reading my, like my one cards for my live stream, someone, the spirit guides like jumped in my face and was like, tell her. And I was like, okay. I literally was like, could you back up? And everyone's just looking at me and I'm like, sorry. Cause normally I try to keep the conversation in my head. So it doesn't freak people out. But especially when I'm doing the after hour show on SOR, you'll see me all the time like this. Because we'll be talking about a case and the person will appear. So, okay energy vampires versus vampires right energetically energetic vampires psychic vampires it can be what you said people who are just drama right and i i've had them people that'll come into a stream that i have 250 people in the stream and within five minutes i've got 17 people left because this person just sucks the life right out of you that person that when they call you and you look at your phone you're like oh you know (laughs) Never excited to hear from them because they're going to tell you the same thing they told you two days ago and the day before that about, you know, their mothers, uncles, brothers, cats, kittens, or whatever it is. There's always some drama with them. High drama. They will definitely suck the energy out of you if you're not careful. You know, if you're not a person, which let's face it, 98% of the population, I guess, and I could be off, um, doesn't put guides up our guards up every time they walk out of their house or answer their phone. You know, I'm, I'm learning to just keep mine up. It's just best. It's just best for me, but most people don't do that or know how to do it or think it necessary to do it, but they will drain your energy. Literally, you will start to feel either sick, dizzy, faint, or very, very, most of the time it's tired. It can also happen though. There's two other ways that that draining can happen. Probably more, but two that I know of. So the other way is like, say you volunteer, I tried to volunteer in a nursing home when I was younger, you know, maybe 12, 13 years ago, it didn't work out because sick people, even when they're friendly and happy, go lucky for some reason, their energy is just draining because their energetic, I'm trying to think of. Their energy fields kind of, and I might not be explaining this the right way, is knows that you have a healthier one. So it's like kind of vampirically sucking your life force to feed this person. Um, it's I can see not all the time, but every once in a while, I will see like just gray black, someone's aura just go gray black. And I know they're going to die. And that's scary you know, especially when you're in a nursing home or like a hospice, you know, and you see this happening and I'm like, oh, you know, crap, but they will pull from you accidentally. 
and you will leave a drain. Um, most people that are empaths or some kind of claircognizant will definitely, I call it like some kind of clair because there's so many, you know, hospitals are not a good place to be, you know, or more because morgues are in hospitals and, and it's not on purpose. I think the high drama people, they just like the reactions that they get out of other people. They don't realize a lot of them that it's an energy thing. Do you know what I mean? Their spirit does, but they don't realize it. Not everyone is a good person. Not everybody is here to be good. Some people are here to stir up crap. Some people are here to cause problems for other people. And energetically, their energy reflects that. So if you're someone who can see auras, if you're someone who can see energy or really feel someone else's energy, that's really going to affect you. But on a smaller level, even people who aren't psychic, even people who don't know what the heck we're talking about, go visit someone in a nursing home, go volunteer in a hospice. And I guarantee you, if you spend a lot of time with the patients, even the friendly bubbly ones, you will leave there completely at the very least tired and exhausted in dream if you're not careful. So another way that you can be vampirically fed off of is by doing things like researching too much about the demonic, researching too much about you know, the fae, negative entities, anything like that, they're going to come in and like we talked about before, suck the very life out of you. The, when they do that, when they make you sick, like I was talking about how researching too much can make you sick, it can make you wondering, that's actually vampiric. They're actually feeding off of your fear energy, your fear response, your anger response. So human beings are not the only person who do this. That's actually one of the main things that, you know, the lower vibrational entities will do when they attach themselves to a human. I believe most addiction is because of um, lower vibrational attachments or de or small scale, because people hate when I say this too, small scale demonic possession. I believe that people who are physically abusive to their spouse or their children or to other people, I believe small scale demonic possession. And I'm not talking about the devil made me do it. I'm talking about just a small scale negative energy attachment that, you know, could probably be dealt with with some light work. But the vampire thing versus, and here's where I had my issue in my research. I wanted to find vampires, creatures of the night, who feed on humans, either drain their blood or not. I think this is what I was looking for, the vampire Lestat. That's what I was looking for. You know, not the sparkly Twilight vampires, even though I love that series. I got to admit, <laughs> all the way, okay? I read the young adult fiction. Those are my favorites. But I was looking for a Lestat, like a badass or a real, I don't know if I could say that, but a real, you know, strong vampire who's like, doesn't give a, crap and just goes around feeding off taking what he wants to me like that power like maybe that's something negative about me like that power I'm just like yeah like I want it so I'm looking for this but the way that I'm looking is not for because when you look for real vampires you get the real vampires of New Orleans the real vampires of Buffalo it's this community of people and I have nothing but respect for them I don't think anything negative about them but they're not what I was looking for people who have a habit of drinking donors blood and they wear the fake fangs and you know all of this and and that's cool they live a vampire lifestyle through donors and blood bags okay like to each their own like if you want to do it standing on your head and spinning I don't care you know live and let live but you're not what I'm looking for like I was like boy bye where is the Lestat vampires I was looking in my research for deaths where people have been exsanguinated and there are marks left deaths where someone had been ripped limb from limb and had no blood left. And a lot of the time, I think either this is attributed to something else or I truly, and I'm not a, you know what theorist by any means, like not at all, but I do think it's possible that the deaths are being hidden because I did not come across really any, I just can't find any research you know, uh, I'm in the 1800s. Yeah. They had all these diseases that they thought people, you know, if you had a gum disease and your, your gums faded away and you had fang teeth, like I have fang teeth on my bottom, you are just automatically a vampire because they didn't know what it was. So due to diseases that they didn't know what it was, they would call people vampires and, and you find graves with like 
cement on top or stakes through it. That was mainly because of diseases. But I talked about the real, uh, the casket girls of New Orleans. And this is one that I think we could have been onto something. Do we have time? Should I like, Absolutely. Tell Unless you okay. want to, you know what? We've been at this almost an hour. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take a quick break so we can hear a word from our sponsors? And yeah, we'll come right back. So everybody, we'll see you in just a couple minutes. What's up, everyone? This is Burton. And Aaron from Lost in the Dark podcast. And raise your horns because you're listening to Wayne and Michelle from the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Gemma Jade and we are talking about vampires and something I wanted to throw out to you because I am as scatterbrained as you are right now because there's so much to talk about. And I don't know why I'm kind of fixated on the whole vampire idea, but I'm, I'm thinking back to my psychology days of the psychopaths. These are people that are not empathic at all. And the only way they generally get joy is by causing others pain, right? And so these people that are these psychic vampires, I'm wondering, you know, are they, do they have a little bit of psychopathy? You know, it, it, it gives them, you know, the whole misery loves company, right? That comes from somewhere. And it's usually because of these kind of people that just want to bring their drama around. So I just wanted to throw that out there to, to shake things up a little bit while you were talking about the, um, you know, people being drawn, uh, having their blood removed and things. And then I'm thinking about cattle mutilation and how many people, like you were saying, have disappeared or have been murdered or uh, you name it, dismembered. And it may be some kind of a, you know, a, a relation to what we're calling a vampire. Maybe it's an alien. I don't know. I, I Gemma, you tell us, I, I don't know. <laughs> you could really go any way with it, you know, but that's what I said when looking for the research, if you try to research or Google real vampire encounters, real vampires, you don't get you know, people being exsanguinated or you get the people who are living in a happy little community in New, New Orleans and Buffalo and all over the country in the United States and I'm sure parts of the world. But like I said, I was looking for a Lestat and really the only thing was the casket girls, you know, um, that I believed yeah. in it because of something that happened in modern day. And this is the only reason I choose to tell this story a lot that back in, you know, I don't even remember the, the century or the date. It was like, I think the 1800s or something might have even been 17 when louisiana was still under the rule of the france of french the france <laughs> of the french see what i mean yep. so there were there weren't enough women in in louisiana new orleans in general and the men were attacking and i'll put that nicely the married women and the younger girls okay because there weren't enough women the ratio was insane like two women for every hundred men you know it was crazy so what they decided to do um some church people some bishops decided to appeal with the men of new of new orleans to the king of france himself through this one bishop to bring some pure, good, young French girls into Louisiana with the specific purpose of marrying off some of these wild and crazy, you know, hooligan men that, that they had here to kind of keep them in line. They would marry, they'd have families, they'd settle down. The King of France thought this was a great idea. And he sent over, you know, ships full of girls who were going to be under the care of the Byzantine nuns until they were married off. The thing was though, when the men were waiting for these, these women, these, I would say they were probably between 16 and 25 years old. So we'll say young women to show up. First of all, their skin was not used to the kind of tropical quote unquote temperatures of new Orleans in the summertime. And they started blistering. They were, they had just taken this ship from France to, to the United States for God knows how long under God knows what conditions. So they weren't very good looking. They were very sickly and they were, those were not easy. Those were not no. easy trips to make. It's not like Especially getting when on you didn't a have any money. princess cruise line. Yeah, exactly. So they came off looking sickly with their skin blistering. So the men were like, ew, you know, not really. And the women were like, oh my gosh. But the main thing about them was they had these hope chests 
that were in the shape of caskets. Now, some people will show you a picture of the small casket shaped hope chest and tell you it couldn't fit a body. They did not have the small ones. These were all of their belongings for their whole life that they were to bring with them from France. They were big and they were big enough to fit a body. I've seen pictures, okay, of the girls carrying these ca caskets. They were actually hope chests, but they looked like caskets. So the girls move in with the Byzantine nuns and the Byzantine nuns were told that these caskets, these hope chests were to be stored somewhere and locked away tight until the day the girl is married off, then she could take it with her. Well, of course, the nuns got curious and they locked all these caskets, these hope chests in the attic of the Byzantine nun place. I don't know their how the Byzantine. I It, it is a place. I don't the remember. Convent or something. The like convent. That. That's it. Thank you. The Byzantine nuns convent. So when the nuns went up there, all of the caskets, the hope chests were open, unlocked, and there was nothing in any of them. So the nuns searched, they thought the girls had gone up there and got their stuff. So they searched the entire convent and the girls swore up and down, like they didn't go up there. They don't know. So the nuns freaked out. And of course, um, you know, we had satanic panic in the eighties. They had vampiric panic because they right away thought that the girls had carried over vampires. Some legends say the girls were vampires, but this is the, the main legend. They had carried vampire bodies over and it sounds fantastical in these chests they were very heavy the nuns had to take like five of them to carry one up the steps the girls couldn't hold them they had to be shipped so you know um thinking along those lines i guess it made sense at the time so they they got nails blessed by the pope in rome and nailed the window shut figuring the vampires had been out they'll burn up in the daytime i want to say that the murder rate in new orleans at the time this was going on more than doubled Okay. So maybe there's something to that. So anyway, the nuns lock it up, lock all of these chests up tight in the closet, tell the girls you're not getting your stuff. And that's the end of that. Nobody ever allegedly went up there again. The window stayed nailed shut. Some people think this is how vampires got into America. I don't believe that because vampires can travel on ship just like any other person, but they'd have to do it at night. So I don't know that part of it. But what I do know is during Hurricane Katrina, 144 or 45 mile per hour winds, the Pope in Rome, when the shutters flew off the attic of the Byzantine nuns convent, which still stands to this day, the Pope in Rome flew someone in and took a helicopter and had them take the blessed nails and re-nail the shutters back onto that window. It's one of the only buildings, if not the only building in that specific area of New Orleans that still has shutters. And even though there's tours given, nobody is allowed on the third floor. And they, and after a hurricane, they literally flew somebody out. Katrina, they, during it, not after, during. When the winds were 145 miles per hour, they had someone in a helicopter take these, these blessed by the new, whoever was Pope then, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, had blessed some nails and they re-nailed the shutter the windows closed and the shutters back on this window why well, was that necessary right they obviously believe it was for something then right whether it was or wasn't you know once the windows were nailed shut the crime rate or the murder rate went back down so that's why i kind of i like to tell that story because there's a part of it that i really do believe in I don't know why they'd be bringing vampires here. Like I said, people are like, this must be how vampires got into America. But anyway, that's the type of vampire I think you're looking for too, you know? And the only way to research that is to look for the way that we know vampires kill. And I can't find it. I just can't get that one case where I'm like, oh, maybe that's it, you know? And I've been fascinated. I would call it an obsession of mine uh, with vampires, with the Lestat type, like you said, psychopathic kind of vampire i romanticize it in my head you know what i mean it's something i've never experienced obviously or i'd be like hey i met a vampire you know they were awesome no i've never experienced a vampire i've never experienced a reptilian there's not much i haven't experienced you know well it seems to be a common trope that survives or has survived for a very long time through you know hu the human ages you're not the only one who's romanticizing. Oh, not we've at all. got Twilight and we've got True Blood. Uh, right. True Blood. I mean, you know, in True Blood, I remember seeing that ages ago and, and man, they really mixed everything in into that. That became a, yep. 
That was a good show. <laughs> it was good up until I think like they kind of, I don't know, towards the end there, they kind of started getting a little fantastical. If you actually yeah. read the Sookie Stackhouse novels, they were way more in depth and way more, I want to say realistic as far as, you know, vampires go and that relationship we would have had they come out of the coffin, so to speak, I'm waiting for that day, you know? Now let's dig into a little bit about these. Now we say tarot because we're ignorant of what's going on mm -hmm. with this, but I think you called them Oracle decks. Oracle decks. Yeah. Okay. So give us a background on what these things are. Do they come from tarot? You know what? Try to give us the, the, the layman's version of what's going on here. It's actually very simple. So tarot, you know, comes from ancient times and I'm not very familiar with tarot. For some reason, it's very hard for me to read tarot. I can't remember what the cards mean. And, and I just, I'm, I'm taking a class. I have to actually take a course to learn tarot, which I'm doing now. The difference between tarot and oracle is tarot has, you know, like the page of cups and, and it has cups, pentacles, swords, and wands or sticks. I'd say, I don't even know. There's yeah. four, there's one for each element and one for each, you know, um, three for each sign. So I know cups is the water element, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, air is swords and that's Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and, and so on, you know, fire is pentacles, I believe. And then there's one for earth and, um, for each, so three signs per element. What Oracle is, is it's okay. So I have one here. I have four decks here and what it is, is someone will, and you can make your own Oracle cards if you want to right now, you know, from Amazon. So what someone does is they'll get an idea. This one is angels and ancestors. Oh, they can't see, but I'll show you guys angels and ancestors deck. And the artwork is by Lily Moses and the author is Kyle Gray. So the difference is this Kyle Gray, who made this deck for each card, he put a corresponding message extended message and divination message of what the card is supposed to mean. So if I pull it for you, that's what it's supposed to mean for you. Okay. But each deck is different. Wisdom of the house of night written by someone else, completely different cards, completely different meanings. I believe Oracle opens up so much more information for someone like me who reads and I channel, I channel spirit, I channel ancestors, I channel extraterrestrials, star seeds, earth angels, whoever wants to come in that's higher elevational for the person I'm reading for. So a lot of people who read Oracle will read you what the book says. That's what the book says. That's what it is. Me, I'll read you what the book says, but I'll also tell you extended what spirit says as well. And sometimes they don't match up. Sometimes spirit will tell me the complete opposite of what the book says. And I'll tell you, I go with spirit. Um, the book is made by a human being. I'm channeling otherworldly entities to come in and help us out here. So, but Oracle decks, I have like 35 of them right now. There are thousands of them. And that's the difference. Tarot is more set. Like, you know, you know that the tower means there's going to be a gigantic change in your life. And, you know, I know what some of the cards mean because some Oracle decks will have a card that will say, this is the card of the tower in tarot. That's what it means. So it's basically just that it's more modern as far as tarot. The meanings have been the same since the beginning of time. And Oracle, you can make the meanings whatever they mean to you if you're making your own deck. So where do the messages come from that are, are written by the, the person? Are, are they saying that they're channeling what that card means on it? What? How are they working that? I really don't know because like I said, there's so many thousands upon thousands of decks and authors and creators. So I guess some psychics probably do, but I mean, I think some people channel without realizing it. So I think a lot of the people when they're making the deck and they're writing the ideas down, I do think it's coming from somewhere other because 98% of the time, a little bit more, the answer I get from spirit will just kind of give more to what the book said. So I do think they're channeling, but they, a lot of them probably don't realize it. They're probably just having some fun and making a deck. And when you're channeling or, or just, a, let's just say in, in daily life, are, are you receiving the, this information from the, the spirit realm that kind of guide you 
in like certain decisions at all. Like you seem to be very in tuned with these energies and, and like you were saying, your guides, how prevalent are they in your life and in helping guide you? Nowadays in the past, I'd say two years since I kind of opened up and decided, okay, this is what I am. I'm tired of fighting it. People can accept me or don't. Mm -hmm. They're very prevalent. A lot of the time, if something's like really bad or dangerous, yes, I'll get that. No, don't do that. Or, and I'll know right where it's coming from. Other times, if I'm, I'm, I'm stressed or with a major decision, I will meditate and, and speak with my spirit guides. There's a certain way that I do that. And I'll ask them for messages, but yeah, a lot of the time going through my day, I'll, I'll, I'll get a message in my head. Like, don't do that. Or don't do that. Or you know, this is going to happen or this person's going to knock on your door or don't accept that call. Yeah. It's all day long, just beep, beep, beep in my head, but it's helpful, you know, and I've learned to block it out when I need to. And sometimes when I block it out, I end up coming to me in my dreams and, um, you know, deceased people I see, you'd be so surprised. I tell people just in the local supermarket, how many dead there are. Like, you don't even know on a daily basis, you guys, you're lucky how many you actually pass because it's insane. I think I counted 17 in my local acne the one night. So you you don't know. Wow. We got a couple of readings we're going to do here. So (laughs) I think we're going to start with Michelle over here. She wanted to get a reading done. She's never had one done before. And, uh, I, I basically had my first one. You did my first one a couple of weeks ago and it was really, really, I did a comprehensive for you. Yeah. It was interesting. It, it was a uh, man. I, like I said, that it's mine. I'm, I'm not talking about it too much, <laughs> but and um, I'll never tell. I keep right. <laughs> very, I'm very serious about protecting the privacy of my clients and the people that I read for. So well, Michelle has decided to be a guinea pig here on the podcast. <laughs> and we also had a friend of ours from another podcast, Burton, uh, from the Lost in the Dark podcast, who sent his information and would like to get a reading. Um, and I'll pull up his email here in a minute. So, uh, Michelle, why don't you guys go ahead and take it away? All right. So, Michelle, I'm going to give you a comprehensive that I do, like the 7 to 11 cards. But right now, what I would like to do is just pull a card or two for you. And I will tell you what the book says. And I picked these because they're kind of short messages as opposed to like some of the longer ones. Cause I knew we're, you know, we're recording, but um, a lot of the time people don't ask questions. They just kind of let me run wild. I know you had a specific question, but I would like to save that for your comprehensive so I can have more cards. So would it be cool if I just kind of pulled and let you know what's coming through your spirit guide? It's like Noreen or Nora here, who is just like very chatty this whole time, making me lose my thought. My my nose is itching and um, just very, I'm surprised that you don't get messages a lot of the time too, of like thoughts that aren't yours outside thoughts. I'm just wondering quickly before I start, do you ever get, I mean, everyone gets it here and there when they're in danger or do you ever like you're walking through the house and suddenly you'll just hear something in your head that you're like, where did that come from? Like, what is that even? Because if not, I'd be very surprised because she's extremely chatty. She like, hasn't, she's worse than me. Like I haven't shut up this whole stream. She's worse. She's like 10 times worse. Um, I would pay attention for that, for hearing like an, either an outside voice or a voice in your head. I feel like you have some kind of connection to the divine, like star seed, earth angel, something otherworldly, which I could probably ferret out when I give you your comprehensive. But right now I'm using the angels and ancestors deck. And what I'm going to do is pull a card and I'm going to tell you what the book says. And then I'm just going to tell you what your spirit guides, your ancestors and when I do she talks a lot, she'll have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's very chatty. Um, when I do comprehensive, I'll get a message from your future self. Like what Michelle of next summer is telling you about either warning you or guiding you to do or not to do, which is interesting. So, all right. I'm pulling one card for you right now. Just general reading. And this is what I do Wednesday night on a first come first serve basis for about four hours on my channel. Anyone that comes in and wants a card, I just pull one. I'm 
take all my 35 decks out and pull. All right. So the card that came up for you, Michelle, is the Druid. And it's the card of hold the space. And these are in no particular order. Usually they're, usually they are um, numbered, but these ones are not. So I'll show you, here's the Druid. And it says, hold things together. Don't make any sudden moves or changes. Stand strong, knowing you are where you're supposed to be. The Druids were the ancient wise ones of the British Isles. They had a deep connection with the earth, the sun, and the moon. They were the scholars who created the Ogham tree language, and they were known for their creative skills in storytelling, poetry, and craftsmanship. When the Druid card appears in a reading, you're being guided to dig deep within and hold your station. If you're wondering what to do next or have a sense of anxiety about what is unfolding in your life, it's time to shift your perceptions and move back to a state of trust. Don't do anything drastic. Just trust in the process and let everything happen as it needs to before taking any more steps. Think of a tree. It has strong roots and it continues to grow and bear fruit. Your life will be a reflection of this. So what I'm getting intuitively from spirit right now is first of all, there's a mercury retrograde coming in, which in this community, it's don't make any uh, major changes. Don't sign any major documents. Don't put your name to anything. Don't make any major purchases. It kind of throws everything out of balance. And that's coming on the 14th, 13th or 14th, depending where you live. All right. So, but what I'm getting is either you're going through right now, or you're about to be a state of kind of, again, unrest, being unsure about something, a decision in your life where it's like, you kind of want to go both ways or you don't want to go either way. I'm not sure which one. And this is where like the extra hard has been. The universe is telling you to trust kind of in the process of life. Don't stress about it. At the end of the day, the universe will make the decisions for you if you're unable to. And this is strange because a lot of the time I'm, I'm always told to tell them to make the decision before the universe can make it for them. But I'm getting the exact opposite for you. Your guide, spirit, universe wants you to know that you can slow down, you can rest. You don't have to be all things to all people. When you give too much of yourself to others, you deplete yourself, which is okay if you're giving back to yourself as well. And I feel on a very high scale, you're not giving enough to yourself. You're giving out too much, either energetically, or even money, or just giving. And that's kind of common when we celebrate Christmas to give, give, give. But the universe is saying you need to take a step back and rest and replenish yourself because you're going to be emotionally kind of mentally unable to make this big decision that's coming up once the retrograde passes. I wouldn't make any major decisions until after the retrograde, and I don't know when that is. Um, probably not until February sometime. But what the universe is saying basically is you need to give back to yourself. You're giving too much to other people. I'm also seeing this, the marionettes. And I see that when there's a little bit of manipulation coming in from somebody, if you're not dealing with it now, it is going to come up probably within the next week or by the end of the month. So that would be the next week, um, maybe the beginning of January of somebody trying to get you to either enable them in some way or somebody kind of playing on your heartstrings to help them with something you really don't want to do. And what I would caution you or what I would tell you, what the universe wants you to know, and I say it all the time, the act of saying no in and of itself is not being unkind, okay? You can be a millionaire and you don't have to lend somebody $10 if you don't want to. Just because you have it doesn't mean you have to give it. And this is a really strong message for you because I feel like you're going to be either physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, or all four just exhausted from giving, giving, giving to, I feel like there's at least one very unappreciative person who's just going to keep taking and is never going to give back. So try to find ways to de-stress yourself. I would say like, you know, um, essential oils, a bath, whatever you do to rest, to relax for you. Um, I'm getting, take a day if you can without tech. Um, if you absolutely must have your phone or technology, do it for minimum just for one day and kind of get back in touch with yourself. You're allowed to say no. You're allowed to put yourself first. It's not a selfish thing. And actually the universe wants you to do that. Um, sometime within the next two weeks, you need to take that day because I feel like you are, we were talking about energy vampires. You're being drained energetically by someone who is very unappreciative. Um, and I'm getting enable, enable, enable. So I don't know if you're enabling someone 
or if someone's trying to manipulate you into enabling. Okay, but it's important that you hold the space, you take the time for yourself. And when decisions come up, if it's a major one, put it off, the universe will help you. Small decisions that you're unsure of, you know what to do in your heart, follow your instinct, okay? Follow your gut. Don't go with reason, go with what you feel. Oh my God, look at my ears. <laughs> I was gonna say the ears so red. <laughs> so far the druid card has definitely hit the nail on the head. You might have, honestly, like all hitting aside, you might have because of this vamp- vampiric draining something negative um, attached to you. And that don't like, it's not like a scary thing. Like, I'm not saying there's like a demon, but you could have some just negative energy in your space that like, if you have sage, you might want to sage it or take a protective bath, which is you take a handful of sea salt, throw it in a bath. You got to shower first. Okay. Like you normally would clean out the bath, take a handful of sea salt, throw it in the bath as hot as you can take it. Soak in the bath, everything but your hair for like no longer than 20 minutes, no less than 10. When you get out, don't dry yourself. Let yourself air dry. That salt is going to form. It's not going to bother your skin. Obviously, if you have sensitive skin, skip the salt, but the salt will dry and hold. I keep saying, hold the space. I keep getting it in my head now. will kind of hold that protection on you. Like when you salt the corners of your room or when you salt your properties, that's how you can salt yourself to get that negative energy off of you so that you are able to make decisions. And if that's happening, there's definitely something that's trying to silence me and your guide Noreen here or Nora. I can't get which one who's just like, she's like so excited to be acknowledged girl. You need to acknowledge her. Talk to her out loud, Michelle. (laughs) Talk to her out loud. Hi, Nora (laughs) or Noreen or Or Noreen. Noreen. I would go with, I would go with Noreen. That's what I'm getting more. And she's like rolling her eyes. Next card. Are you, do you draw more? How does that work? Well, I could draw more or, I mean, that's up to you time-wise. Do you want another? I'd love to hear a couple more. Oh, yeah. She's, she's a risk taker. So she's, I like it. Intrigued now. All right, so let's go with, let's go with, I'm going to give you one that goes a little deeper. Just let me grab it out here. And this is my Alice the Wonderland deck. It's my favorite deck and it goes a little bit more in depth to whatever's on your mind. And what I normally tell people, like I know what you're asking about for the comprehensive, for the the heavy reading I'm going to give you. What I say when I'm shuffling shuffling the cards is, you know, set your intention, kind of ask the universe in your mind what you want to know. And Noreen here will bring it to me and hopefully we'll get it answered. So I'm going to pull one card for you. General situation. Noreen, what 2022 is going to bring. (laughs) (laughs) I believe the energy is really shifting where 2022 is going to be from what I can see a lot better than 2021 and definitely 2020. So just in an, on an energetic scale, but I hate that we have a retrograde in Aquarius first thing, just like we did this year. Um, Those retrogrades technology just bounces out for no reason. I mean, it's horrible. Each sign it affects differently. All right, so you got card number 40, and that's the card of keeping up immense effort and advancement. And this is what it says. Well, in our country, said Alice, still panting a little, you generally get to somewhere else if you ran very fast for a long time, as we've been doing. A slow sort of country, said the queen. Now here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. The lessons of your life are taking place at a fast rate, far too swiftly for you to process them. It seems you are only just keeping up with all the changes coming to you. You must work very hard to make any discernible progress for now. You have been trying and trying to get ahead, and you always seem to be in the very same place. This could be in almost any aspect of your life, finances, relationship, career, or success. At this point in time, the answer is to work even harder. You will not have to do this much work with this much effort, perhaps ever again, but the only way out of your current situation is to accelerate, get intense, and push for the breakthrough that is just ahead of you. You will need to devote more time than you would wish, and sacrifices will have to be made. However, if you do this, you will push through the resistance and explode into the next stage of your life. Michelle, put all your effort into surging ahead and watch as you begin to move in the tiniest of ways ahead of where you've been. Once you take that leap, 
stay focused on where you're going and you will begin to leave the place you find yourself in now. When you push through, others will recognize the incredible dedication you have to your own life. This will inspire them to push forward with their own dreams as well. One thing's for sure, the intensity of your approach brooks no resistance. Your movement and energy will drive away all stagnation. Now go. A time of very hard work is the divination, getting ahead, determination, and resolve to push through into the next stage. The urge to improve your status and be rewarded, moving quickly with strength and stamina, a great deal to process and integrate. So I feel like this could either be career or finances or both, um, but you would know better than me. And I feel like what the universe is saying is exactly kind of what the book said, where you're pushing and you're pushing and you're working, and you're working and you're giving all this, but it, you feel kind of like, okay, when's the next step? When's the next level? Like I've done all the work. I've put all the effort in, like, where's the reward? Like, I think you're asking now, is the juice still worth the squeeze? Is it still going to be worth this much effort if we're taking such slow steps toward advancement and, and, and moving so slowly towards the goal? despite you moving so fast. It's like the universe is not caught up with you. The universe moving at a snail's pace and you're running like White Rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, right? The universe is saying, keep going, put in even more effort because at the end of the day, and I see this, maybe I'm looking two, three months down the road, you're really going to start seeing a return on whatever investment you're making. Again, whether it's financial, whether it's whatever, it is that you're investing all of this time and effort into. There's at least one thing, at least, that you're really focused on and you're waiting to see your return. Three months, maybe four at the most, you're going to start seeing that return. And then you're going to be able not to slow down and stop, but well, not to stop, but to slow down a little bit and really reap the benefit of and the rewards of all the effort that you've been putting in for all this time. The universe is saying now is not the time to stop or second guess yourself. Keep moving forward with all of your ideas. Keep moving forward with hard work. Don't give up. Don't think that you're doing the wrong thing. Don't think you're in the wrong business. Don't think you've made a wrong choice. You are right on track to where you're supposed to be. You are right where your destiny wants you and has put you. But they're testing you now. They're testing your strength, your stamina. How bad do you want it? Remember, even for a penny in the wish well and a fountain in the mall as a little kid, that wish costs you that penny, right? So everything that we want costs us something. What is this dream, this this thing you're putting all this effort into, whatever it is, what is it worth to you? Is it worth three, four months of this hardcore fighting and pushing, being frustrated, feeling like the universe is pushing you back, but the universe is saying, this is just a test. Are you going to pass it? Okay, you are right where you're destined to be. You are on the right path. You're making all the right choices. And yes, it's frustrating, but if you can push through this one last wall, you're going to explode into whatever it is you're trying to, and you are going to be rewarded in ways that you can't even imagine. I'm getting financial reward as well. Like that card for me was really focused, not because of what you said your question was, but it was really focused on like, you're working towards something, trying to maybe make it a business or maybe make money off of something that you've been putting so much hard work into. Um, and wondering like, you know, when am I going to see something like this? This is bogus. Um, it's not, you are going to see that return on investment, quote unquote, very, very soon. So keep going. Don't, don't give up now. Yeah, probably it's probably Wayne over there hoping that I, I can retire soon. Three, four more months, maybe. Oh no, more like <laughs> we got, we got seven, to go. seven and a half more years. There's something coming in for you though. There's a really big reward coming in that I see probably around springtime for whatever you're most focused on. Definitely a big reward. And I do see some kind of financial link. I don't know if it's going to be a financial reward, but I, I kind of think it might be either like a small inheritance or something unexpected coming in, some unexpected source of income or money. Um, not a windfall, but something definitely useful um, that I can definitely see for you. So whatever it is that you're doing, you're getting frustrated, get frustrated, yell at Noreen over here, but keep going. I was going to say, if it, any sort of inheritance, I, I hope it's not in the spring. That would mean that it would be my father. Oh, so. no, I don't see any, I don't see any death. Okay. I don't know that I would say it on air. If I did, I would probably tell you privately, 
but I didn't feel anything like that um, off the card. But I will look into that in your comprehensive. Okay. All right. Well, one more, or do we want to move on to Burton's? Let's I don't do know. One. Let's do one more. Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> because here, here's going to be the test, right? So something's going on with this communication when you're Is doing it really the, bad. Cause I can plug my mic in. Yeah, I don't know. Do you if want that's me to try gonna, my mic? I don't know if it's that or like the, the sound waves when the card gets held up close to the microphone. Oh, that could well, be maybe, it. Maybe I mean, I don't have it. that issue on my live stream, though. To be honest with you, I don't have that with my live stream. But All right, well, why don't what? maybe I could plug my mic in? Okay, yeah. Or let's just not that. hold the card up. We'll try my uh, mic. Yeah, let's try the mic. All right, let's do it. Let's pull from the angels and ancestors again. You got the white witch, be the light. I don't know. Um, and I've had this deck for about six months that I've ever pulled this card. I didn't even know this card was in here. Um, it's got an owl. So right away, just so you know, I see um, a lot of like wisdom coming in, like a lot of, a lot of inner knowledge and knowing a lot of wisdom. Maybe now that I introduced you to Noreen, you're going to be more open and susceptible to hearing her wisdom and her knowledge. Okay. Take the higher road and choose the light. Remove yourself from lower energy experiences. I'm just telling you this. The white witch card represents the maiden aspect of the triple goddess of paganism and modern Wicca. The maiden is a gentle, innocent, and pure aspect of the goddess, a loving soul who wants nothing but the best for the whole earth. Here she is joined by a horned owl, showing that she is willing to respect those with more wisdom and experience than she has, but she is also willing to trust what she feels to be right within. With this card, you are being reminded of the goodness within. No matter what is happening to you or around you, you have a choice. Choose not to be pulled into dramas, bickering, or energies that are just going to limit your joy. If you are surrounded by people who are hostile towards you or someone else, or you are in a negative situation... Perhaps in your workplace, you are being invited to be the light. You are an incredible person who can really bring light. So how can you change the energy? How can you redirect the conversation to love? How can you protect yourself? This is just what we were talking about, guys. How can you help the person that is being picked on? Or are you the one who's guilty of causing a drama? You'll know the answers. Know always that you are being encouraged to shine the light you were born to share. So, I mean, that's a pretty obvious message, you know not getting involved in dramas or psychic vamp psychically vampiric people. We were just talking about them. They're very drama all the time. And I feel again, like there's a person either in your life right now or who is coming in, who is just going to be very negative with you. And I don't think they're going to be negative as far as to your face. They're going to be sweet and they're going to want something from you, but I feel like their energy and their actual intent and purpose is going to be very negative. They're going to try to manipulate you, get you to enable them. Um, you know, come on, please. How could you do that? How could you say no to me? And that, that, that kind of stuff is what I'm getting. I'm also feeling like, Hmm. I'm feeling like you may be prone to kind of getting into these little dramas. Um, not so much you being in them, but like the people around you all the time, constantly either at your workplace or just like in general, I know I'm always arguing with cashiers. I don't know, like wherever I go, I'm arguing with the cashier. It doesn't matter. You know, things like that. Like there may be just like that energy around you. I think this card is very interesting that I pulled it now for you. Now that I've kind of introduced you to your spirit guide and told you like, you can talk to her out loud. She will respond to you. You can talk to her in your head. Okay. Okay. What this is saying is you're going to receive those answers now a lot quicker of what do I do in this situation? How do I get rid of this person? You ever be around that person we're talking about where you're just like drained and just like some people like make me feel even just like dirty, just being around them because they're so like ill, like those kinds of people. And you're going to have those answers. Now you're going to have the wisdom of your guides. Now that owl, you are going to have inner knowledge and knowing now I really feel, and I've never had a reading like this where I've said this, it's not something I say all the time, but I feel like this may have opened you up a bit. 
after the show, I'm going to ask you for just a tiny bit more information, nothing personal or anything where I would like to chart you and see your moon and rising signs, because I feel like as a Virgo, you know, you're very practical, you're very down to earth, but I feel like there's a part of you that really was meant to be open to this kind of thing. And I feel like that's what we're doing right now. I feel like you were meant to be introduced. That's why she was being so loud. I feel like this could really change um, some kind of dynamic in your head and how you go about your life. Um, Yeah, I can't wait to do your comprehensive personal because this is like, I'm getting like met, meant to be like mesh, like, like we were all meant to be here. You were meant to get this reading. You were meant to meet Noreen. And now you're going to just flow with her and start getting intuitive messages, inner knowledge, or at least knowing you're getting them. Cause I feel like you've gotten them for most of your life. You just didn't recognize what they were. Very, very interesting. All right. <laughs> Michelle, how do you feel about that? <clears throat> Uh, like I said, the, the, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Yeah, it, it okay. All, makes sense. all right. Very cool. All right. So we got one more for you. Mm-hmm. It's a friend of the podcast. His name is Burton. He's a Sagittarius. Do you need the year he was born? No, not unless no? I'm sorry. Okay. Just Sagittarius is good. Yep. That's why I usually ask for birth date because some people don't know their sign. Otherwise right. I would just ask for the sign. Okay. So And he says he can't really think of a great question. So he says, will the Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal encounters podcast and the lost in the dark podcast, how will they do over the next year? So he's got his mind in the right place. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Podcast. So I like it. Yeah. All right. That's uh, Burton from lost in the dark podcast. Hello, Burton, and I'm going to pull a general card for you. Sagittarius, huh? That's a fire sign. My dad is the only Sagittarius I know, and I'm a Pisces, so water. I put his butt right out. (laughs) All right, so you have choices, card number 46. And it's funny because this deck is actually written by the author of a young adult series about young vampires that I've read, The House of Night. And this is the wisdom of the house of night book. So it's essentially supposedly channeled from the goddess of night herself, the goddess Nyx. So when it says my child, or I am your goddess, they're talking about the goddess of night Nyx. Okay. So it's card number 46 and I just have to find it. Every choice you make has a consequence. Even your thoughts are like magnets drawing experiences to you for the good or for the bad. Right now, you are faced with such a choice between light and dark. All you need to do is ask, is this for the highest good? The choice you make will be an important step in your life lessons. Remember, even not deciding is a choice. What will it be? Choose another card to show you what your choice will bring you. So we're up to two cards now for Burton. (laughs) All right. Come on. Oh, the warrior. And that's card number two. I want to focus a little bit first on the first card. The first card, the card of choices is saying how it said, you know, even not making a choice is choosing because eventually the choice is going to be made. That's why it's called a choice. I feel like as long as you all with the podcasts focus on the highest good and don't become like so many people become selfish or overly focused on one thing, right? Make sure you're focusing on people on the human element, like you are and interviewing people like me and getting the word out there. As long as you continue to work with integrity, which I'm sure you will seem like stand up people to me to work with integrity, not be distracted. And I'm getting for Burton. Okay. Specifically don't fall into a get rich quick scheme that's going to be coming in in the next few months for you. Keep on the track you're on. Slow and steady wins the race. That's what I actually really, I actually just heard that in my head. 
don't fall for these get rich quick schemes. If you do it this way, you're going to make way more money, way faster, um, stuff like that. You know what you're doing. You're on the right path. You're on the right track. Um, Wayne, so are you as far as the podcast, like you are all right where you are supposed to be. I'm seeing like this, like perfect unison, perfect. You're good. You're, you're this way. As long as you don't like deviate from what you're doing now, you guys are going to be very successful. And I think um, the successful energy that I pulled off Michelle's card also Wayne could be a part of what you're going to experience too, as like energetically attached to Michelle with the success coming in, as long as you stay focused. So the warrior card, it says my beloved child, when the warrior appears to you, it's such a fortunate sign that no matter what is happening to you in your life, you are truly protected. Whatever you are experiencing right now, all will be well. If your question is regarding love, this card represents someone who is deeply committed, protective, and kind to you. Friendship and love are sacred, and these qualities are important for a relationship to grow. If this person doesn't have these qualities, then move on, for I will send you someone who is true. Someone with a true warrior spirit instead. Remember, life is about learning and discerning who is true and who is not. There is another message here to consider. Do you embody these qualities in yourself? Now is a good time to think about how committed you are to your path. So again, with the discerning who is true and who isn't, I think that's that get rich quick scheme, letting someone come in and kind of try to shake things up. Somebody who's high drama, somebody who is just looking for an easy way to make money instead of putting the hard work in, which as we know, podcasting, YouTubing, it, it takes, <laughs> it takes time before you start making that money years. If you stay on the right path, be the warrior, be the warrior and the champion for the people who don't have a voice. Okay. And this remember guys is not me giving advice. This is all I'm saying, everything that's coming through. I like to remind people of that. It's not me. It's not Gemma. Be the warrior for the people who don't have this voice. Use your platform to educate. Don't fall for get rich quick schemes. Use your, use your intuition to figure out who you should work with and who you shouldn't be discerning with who you invite, not only onto your podcast, but into your life. I feel like some people are going to be jealous. I call it the snake in the grass. Mm -hmm. Um, there's someone in because he included you guys. I don't know who this is for. I think it's more for Burton. There's a snake in the grass, meaning there's somebody kind of in the inner circle who is like, oh yeah, you know, good for you. You're this awesome. And behind your back, they're like, you know, F him. And then somebody who's very jealous of your success. And this might end up being the person who's like, no, do it this way, you know? Um, so be very careful of in your, your inner circle, any new ideas that you guys have kind of keep them to yourselves between people that you trust. Don't put a lot of new ideas out into the universe. Um, especially during the retrograde, somebody could steal your ideas. Somebody could you know, try to strike you for no reason. Look out for people who are going to be jealous of your success because I feel like a lot of that's coming in and it always does with the retrograde. So yes, success, definitely success as long as you, you know, stay true and honorable. Wow. All right. That's, those are some great reading. I can, Burton. I can see Burton <laughs> right now going, uh -huh. I wonder if it's this person, this person, <laughs> that this person. With that happened with, um, and I know he won't care if I say his name It happened with Chad Smith. He's like, I just can't figure it out. Everybody loves me, but you know what? Because I warned him to it, it wasn't in any of his other readings. It's like energetically, the person must've just, you know, he didn't realize who it was. And they were suddenly like dipped out, you know, I was like, well, look around and see who's no longer there. Um, so he, what he did manage to change it by being careful. I am Chad Smith. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody the other night in the stream um, for SOR said, when I go to the bars, I tell women, my name is Chad Smith. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was dying. I was like, no uh, way. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh my God. All right. So now for the big question, what can you discern or into it, I guess you could say, and talk to your spirit guys about what might be coming next year. Like, what is this new year of, I call it the year of twos, two, zero, two, mm. two. 
So what what do we got going on? And I do I like numerology, especially nine. So nine's my favorite number. Minus twenty three. Um. All right. So I usually work with specifically the signs, but I am getting some something with twenty twenty two. On an energetic level, things are really changing. Obviously, the retrograde, we don't want to be making any important decisions, signing any documents, things like that, making any major purchases until that that comes through. And a retrograde in Aquarius is going to be like we're um, as a collective in our heads a lot, asking a lot of questions, questioning authority, questioning everything, which, you know, can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on where you are in your life and, and what you believe in. 2022 is going to bring a total shift from 2020 and 2021. And it's going to bring us again, energetically into kind of as a collective, a higher elevation, not literally where we're going to spiritually elevate as a collective, but I think it's going to bring us into all of the lessons we learned in 2020, even 2019 towards the end there, everything got like very, very icky is the only way I can really describe it. So I feel like it's going to kind of usher in a new era of the way that our world works, the way that our country, you know, the United States works. I feel like as far as spiritually, a lot of people are going through this transcendence, going through because of all the questioning, because of all the being in our head, we're becoming more in tune. The veil is thinning, guys. It's thinning. And it's not just thinning out in the month of October to be thinnest at Halloween. The veil in general, the big picture is thinning. And if we're not careful, there's going to be a lot of negative attachments towards people that are you know, um, here to protect us or empower or whatever. So the best thing that we can do is I'm getting a lot of political stuff and I'm like, no, I'm not going there. The best thing that we can do is keep ourselves grounded, keep asking questions and really, really make sure. And I know this is a weird thing to say, but it's, it's what it is. Don't give in to anger. Don't let the negativity affect you to the point where you become kind of jaded um, even aggressive. Okay. Cause I feel like a lot of people are going to be affected in that way. When the veil thins, not just our deceased loved ones come through, come through, not just our spirit guides and our angels. Okay. There are, there is negative as well that comes through and will literally attach immediately to the first person that it can and drain them. And then, you know, that's another person lost until they find themselves again. So we have to be really careful of what we let in. We have to be really careful of who we let in in 2022, especially because I'm seeing how I'm seeing it is like 2020, 2021, and then 2022, and then light, light. So we are moving into a better place as a collective, but there's still, you know, as we get stronger as a collective for the light, the negative builds and gets stronger as well. So really keep yourself protected. And as long as you stay on, obviously the side of the light, keep your light up, you're going to be just fine. And like I said, normally I can give predictions like that for specific signs. So as in general, it's a little hard for me. So that's really yeah. the best I can do on that without but, getting into politics and civil war and all that. <laughs> so. Right, right. No, that's understandable. Um, what about thoughts on with the recent, you know, U.S. government saying that there is UFOs? And I know we didn't get to touch on so many topics. That's why we're going to have you back. That's right. <laughs> but um. What do you, what are you like foreseeing with the UFO topic coming up in 2022? Anything jumping out at you now that we do have, you know, the, the, the government saying UFOs are real things like this are, are, seem to be moving forward. And I hope that our podcast can be part of that, especially with the way that Michigan has been treated since the late sixties with the whole swamp gas uh, stuff that destroyed any kind of talk of ufos or paranormal in mm -hmm. this state for 50 years what i'm getting i mean it depends really because there's so many different species and areas of ufo but in general of aliens i mean you know extraterrestrials i'd like to say in general 
I think what a lot of us don't understand is that that permission needs to be given. There's some kind of, and if we had talked about this, we could talk about it another time, pact or, or something that permission needs to be given. There are certain species that are doing hybrid programs. There are certain species that are doing, um, you know, the abductions and the genetic research. So permission does need to be given. I don't believe it's entirely up to the government. The United States government, especially, I do believe, um, gave permission for these abductions and all of these things to take place. I feel like as a collective, again, we aren't ready for the actual truth, the real big picture of that we can choose where we go once we pass, you know, cross over. Do we want to go to earth? Do we want to go here? Do we want to go there? That there's so many different life forms that, that experiment on us, that watch over us and protect us, that need us to save their species. So I feel like in 2022, I don't know, but from what I'm getting from my guides and even the little visitor I have here, there's not going to be much drastic change until as a collective, we all come together and get to that point where we're really ready to be accepting of the extraterrestrials, what they want, why they're here and to work in tandem. They, a lot of them don't like us because of all of the war. Some of them don't like us because, you know, we're living and heading on the path that they headed on, you know, and I can't wait to talk about this with you, with the technology and, and becoming less emotional. So no, 2022, from what I, I'm being told and what I can see, I'm not saying there won't be any advances. I feel like as long as podcasts like yours and you know UFO Garage and whoever keep pushing and I push the paranormal information, the reptilians and the hybrids and all that, keep getting the information out there as accurately as we can. But until as a collective, we really get our stuff together, I don't believe there's going to be any major, major breakthroughs. Well, maybe we won't get it from an authority type of a figure, but I think oh, individually our, for sure. Our yeah, our community, mm-hmm. I think we'll be able to. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing individually, we'll put some things. Yeah, individually. Oh yeah, they're they're definitely, and they have been for. I'm seeing like four years now, stepping up on the abduction, stepping up on the hybrid, the experimentation, the visitation, the general knowing of the general public. Yeah, they're making way more visits to individuals. And it's funny, the men in black said it the best in that movie. Um, He said, a person is smart. People together, and I'm not saying people are stupid, but you know what I mean? One person making one decision can think rationally. You get a bunch of uh, people that are crazed and scared they're going to go crazy. So, but individually, yes. Oh, absolutely. They've stepped it up so much more. And that's another reason I feel like something is coming. This energy is, is, is insane. If you can see energy the way I can see and feel energy, you would understand it's, it's crazy. So, but do I think like largely, like you said, from an authority, from a government, no, they need that permission and it's not going to be given until they interact with enough of us and see us going up on the scale instead of down fascinating it's so awesome well i think we've been at this for almost two hours now and that's kind of how (laughs) things go here but it's been awesome having you on and before we let you go we got to ask you a couple the one about the ufos i'm not going to ask you because obviously you've got some experience there and we are going to be having you back within probably a couple months here and And we're going to go through this again, and we're going to try to be a little bit more focused on, I wanted to give everybody a general, you know, background on you and see some of the stuff that you do and that, you know, but we're going to have you back and we're going to touch on the UFO topic even more and the different species and things that you know of, but do you have any connection to Michigan? I have you guys in Chad Smith. It's always Chad Smith. It always comes back to Chad. Well, actually, I call him my Smith boys because his cousin brother, Jake, as well. But um, no. And I just think Michigan is so cool because I'm a huge Eminem fan. So anytime I hear someone's from Michigan, I automatically think that they're awesome. And you guys are. And I had so much fun. And um, I will probably be coming to visit my Smith boys um, sometime next summer. So um, I'll stop in and say hi. 
Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to all go out and grab some there. But don't forget Big Willie, you know. He's oh, I keep up- for, I keep thinking he's from Pennsylvania. I don't know why I have it in my head. But yeah, we should all get together and yeah. go out and just have some fun. That would be amazing. I promise them I would come and yeah. visit them some point next summer. And uh, I plan on keeping that promise and having them come to Jersey. We're going to hit the Jersey Shore. Oh, so there we go. We should totally do it. Atlantic Definitely. City, right? AC. Oh, yeah. I don't gamble, but I love the shopping and the food. So I'll take uh, you guys. I've been going to AC since I'm like eight years old. I know Jersey. It's like the mob for me. Every time I try to leave, it pulls me back. <laughs> right. But yeah, we got us, obviously. And then there's Chad Smith, who's really moving, making some waves there with his uh, podcast. And he's doing big things for paranormal sure. Paranormal Chop Shop with Sonny. And then we got Big Willie, who, you know, you guys are co hosting a spaced out radio after show. So, so much fun. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, so what do you got coming up? So I'm in the middle of starting up a whole bunch of new projects, but for right now, where you can find me is my YouTube channel, simply titled Gemma Jade. Now there's two Gemma Jade YouTube channels. One of them is a um, blonde who does lifestyle. You'll see me, um, I'm a brunette and it says paranormal or whatever. Um, So Gemma Jade, that's me on YouTube. I have a Facebook Gemma Jade. Um, and again, you'll just have to see my picture. I've got brown hair. You'll know I have a connection on Facebook with like Steve Stockton. And you look at my friends and, um, I write, I'm the head writer right now for the missing persons mysteries channel. So a lot of people in this community know Steve Stockton and his little silver tongued voice there. Almost every word he says was written by yours truly. So go on over there and check that out and space out radio for sure. Um, Well, first, let me tell you, my book, Missing the Faith Theory, can be found on Amazon, okay, and um, Kindle or paperback edition. If you want a comprehensive, in-depth 7 to 13 card oracle reading, you can email me or for any other correspondence um, at gemmajadeparanormal at gmail.com. I do them for donation. There is no, you know, set amount um, at this point. So, I mean, as long as I can keep up with them, I'll keep giving them. It was a gift that was given to me to give as a gift to others. Um, As long as, like I said, I can keep up, I'll keep doing that. And Spaced Out Radio on Saturday and Sunday nights from 11 p.m. Eastern Time to 2 a.m. Eastern Time. It's myself, Big Willie Townsend, and I always forget John Hudson. John Hudson, the guy with the nice hair, right? I sexy hair, John, that's what I call him. Cause I can sexy never remember John. his last name. So, and the first time I ever met him, his hair was like wild man hair. And I was like, Ooh, sexy hair, John. So the fedora wearing sexy hair, John Hudson, who does the unbiased UFO report on spaced out radio, big Willie Townsend from UFO garage. I think I got that right. Yep. And um, cause I know him from spaced out radio and myself from Gemma Jade, missing persons and mysteries, 11 PM Eastern to 2 AM Eastern. We talk all things. Woo. We have so much fun. The, the show we did, we took this weekend off for the holidays, but last Sunday I laughed. It was hilarious. Then I've, and do you know, I found a Wilf shirt on Amazon. I'm going to, I'm going to. There gonna, was a uh, joke going around about instead of MILF, Wilf. With which. Right. It actually stands for wife or what I'm looking for, but I'll, I'll text you that afterwards. So you can go on over to Spaced Out Radio, subscribe, turn your notification bell on, do the same on my channel. What I do on my channel is I give a weekly pick a card, three card um, intuitive oracle reading, but mainly I stick with the paranormal reptilians, demonic possession, alien hybrids, shapeshifters, vampires, werewolves, you guys name it. If it's woo, I'm talking about it on my channel. There's some true crime thrown in there. If I get a visit from somebody who really wants me to put it out there, but I did steer away from true crime because of all the visitations and not wanting to upset the families, mainly the mothers of the victims, because there are some that have visited me that they're still missing, but I know that they're, they're not missing anymore. So that's it for now. And I got more books coming out, but they're not out yet. So a compilation of ghost stories between myself and Steve Stockton, which we're handing in in two weeks. So it should be out probably like February. Awesome. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been one heck of a show and man, did we, did the time fly by? It did. We, we ran the gamut <laughs> and we covered a lot, but my goodness, it's like finding a couple snowflakes in Antarctica. I mean, I, that's how I feel like we just, 
not even scratching the surface. We're just barely touching it. So next time we have you on, we'll have a dedicated subject that we'll focus on and, and we'll dig into. And I think our community would probably really love to hear your ideas and thoughts on the reptilians and the different UFO and extraterrestrial uh, species and things like that. So we're going to probably touch on that next. So, all right. Well, Gemma, it's been great having you on. We want to thank you for coming on the podcast and take care. Guys, I had so much fun. Thank you, Michelle. It was so nice meeting you. Wayne, it's nice putting a face to the name. And I'm going to text you the picture of that shirt just so you see it. Good night, guys. And thank you so, so much. Um, Michelle, protect yourself. Take that um, protective ritual bath, okay? I think it'll really be helpful for you. Good night, guys. All Good right. night. Good night. All right. That was an insane interview. There was so much talked about and we just barely scratched the surface. So we're definitely going to be having Gemma come back on and we're going to focus in on some more specific topics to talk about, whether it's going to be vampires or more about the Fae or UFOs and the different species of aliens she seems to know about. It's it, it's so fascinating we got to get her back on here. But there's one thing I do want to say, and that is that during Michelle's reading, you're going to hear the volume dropping in and out, which I found very strange. But I think we figured out what was the problem. And it was the cards that she was holding up were kind of blocking the sound waves going to the microphone. Yeah, so. she was using the microphone off of her laptop at first. And her microphone was so sensitive that just by putting those Oracle card or a single Oracle card in front of that microphone, it was kind of blocking the sound. So yeah, it, it sounds I, I don't muffled. Think that it, I don't think it was my, my spirit guide, Noreen. <laughs> Which is very strange that that name came up after we sat and talked about it for a little bit. What were you thinking? about that name why well, kept okay it was like noreen or nora <clears throat> and i know that my mother's middle name was nadine so just wondering if there might be some sort of variation with the name and yep and who knows and uh was your mother a very chatty person my mom was of course very chatty <laughs> of course she was she was a southern girl she talked a lot what are you trying to say Southern girls talk a lot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so so do us uh, northern girls as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, what other things were you thinking about that you uh, took away from that reading? The discussion of how we typically perceive, you know, the, the fairies, the pixies, the sprites, um, um, basically through our, our lens of Disney and what has been provided at least through my lifetime. And once you start looking into Irish and Celtic folklore of the, you know, of the Fae, it's a, it's a, a darker realm that I tell anyone to proceed with caution. So even my students in mythology, even though we spend our focus on Egyptian, Norse and Greek and Roman, you know, I explain that there are just so many other mythologies out there, but there are ones that they have to be very careful of if they do begin to explore them. Yeah, there seems to be a, a dark side to these things. Fairy tales are not supposed to be very light and fluffy, I guess you would say. They were tales to warn children about you know, don't go with strangers. Don't go in the woods by yourself. You well, might be to, attacked. Well, to warn humanity in general. Yeah. And that's why, you know, when she brought up Grimm's fairy tales, uh, exactly. They're, they were never written to be, you know, light and airy and all princess-like. It, it was the, the darker side of these stories as, you know, cautionary tales. Yeah. And of course, Disney came along and wanted to make money off of them. So, you know, spruced them up a little bit and took many, the bites many, many, off of them. Yeah. Many blondes with big eyes. <laughs> right. And, you know, Tinkerbell. Everybody knows Tinkerbell, the, the little fairy, but these things were vicious. And, you know, I didn't know that like trolls and ogres fell into like that category of the fae as well. 
There, you know, there's a lot about that stuff I don't really know. I mean, I've known about trolls under the bridge and things like that, and but uh, you know, that being part of the Fae, that was uh, interesting to hear about. Well, there's more and more shows out there that depict the the Fae in their their darkness, um, and that's why I brought up Spiderwick. Spiderwick Chronicles is one. Um, that I remember having more of the the darker, sinister side, so of that mythology incorporated into the story. Yeah, that was a it was a great interview, and once again, we just scratched the surface of that, and uh, we hope to have her back on soon, and for the new year, maybe we'll get her back on within the next couple months, and she's going to be very busy over there at Spaced Out Radio. And doing her own show. And, um, you know, you can check the show notes for links to her YouTube channel where she does readings. If you just go into her chat and let her know that you're there. And if you would like a reading, she will do a reading for you. So check her out on YouTube. And I think that's going to be it for tonight, Michelle. What do you think? I, yep. I think we're going to go ahead and call it a night, folks. New Year's Eve. All right, everybody. We want to thank you once again for listening to the podcast. And remember, keep your eyes to the sky. You have been listening to the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. You can reach us at mi.ufo.podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at mi underscore UFO and join our Facebook group by searching for Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal encounters. So until next time.